The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific goal. And to me, to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, that was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now, it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time, instead of thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And then it can't be as crazy as it is. It could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. It could be that you're emulating a certain, uh, you know, bodybuilder or a certain football player, a certain boxer, whatever it is, have those pictures put all over the wall like I did when I was a kid. I put pictures of Rich Park and of Sonny Liston, of uh, boxers and of Ali and of powerlifters and weightlifters all over my bedroom, uh, you know, uh, wall so that every day when I go to sleep, every day when I wake up, I look at those pictures and they motivate me. You need that motivation and then therefore you have this kind of imprint in front of you all the time and you know exactly what you're chasing. And this is why I always smiled when I was in the gym. People always came up to me and said, why are you smiling? You're working out five hours a day. You're doing the same as the other guys, but the other guys have a sour face. They're pissed off that they have to do another rep or another set or something. I looked forward to. I looked forward to another thousand set, uh, reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. So I was turned on by that. I was excited. I couldn't wait to get to the gym. You know, one of the things of, uh, you know, creating urgency, it can go, you know, one way or the other. Because like, I remember that when I weighed 245 pounds, and Bob Rafelson, the director of Stay Hungry, said to me that I'm interested in having you come in for reading and work on your acting and all this because I'm interested in having you in a movie to star with uh, Jeff Bridges and with Sally Fields. I was delighted about that and I was excited and I started pumping up more and more. And then he said, but I don't want you to weigh more than 210 pounds. So I said, well, I said, well <laughs> it's funny you come to me and <laughs> you want me to be in a movie, but I'm weighing 245, 246. I said, I just won the Olympia. I say in 19, which was 1974, and I was really at my biggest. And, uh, but he demanded that, and he says, look, it's very simple. On the day we start shooting, he says, I'm gonna put you on a scale, and if you don't make the 210, you're out, because I have someone else in mind. And I worked on it, I started visualizing myself very clearly as a lean athlete because that's the only way I could lose that weight and all of a sudden get interested in running more because up until that point I ran like three miles after training or before training or whatever, but now all of a sudden it was five miles, six miles, seven miles, eight miles, and they even ran mini marathons in order to lose the weight and I did everything with high reps and I was watching my diet, what I eat and all those kind of things. And by the day, the day before, I remember we were in Birmingham, Alabama, the day before I was at the YMCA with Bob Rafelson. He was swimming and I was working out and I was running. There was a track there and I was running. He says, let's step on a scale. And I stepped on the scale and I weighed 209. So it just shows to you what is possible if you visualize exactly what you want to look like. So it can go one way, which is that you can lose weight and get trim and get slim and everything, get the abs out and all this. Or you go the other way and you gain weight because you see yourself big and you see yourself as a winner of a Mr. Olympia or something like that. So it can go either way. But in each case, it was like certain time limits were set and I had to perform and there was no room for any kind of like 
well, I can't get my act together or anything like this because there's only a certain amount of time. But the key thing again is have the clear vision. Have the specific goal of what you want to accomplish because then you never go to the gym and you say, the day I feel down a little bit, I don't know what it is all about, I don't know my life, I'm confused. No. I tell you that I was a perfect example of someone that was not confident at all. I mean, when I was a kid, I was just like any other kid. I had my hang-ups and problems and all this. But when I joined the weightlifting club and I won my first little trophy because I did the best clean jerk, and then we went to another meet and I won another little trophy, I started feeling like somebody. So, and of course, not everyone is going to have this kind of a situation, but the bottom line is, Everyone can use the same method because I used it in politics, I used it in making money, I used it in everything that I've done in the movie business. When you have one little victory, little victories add up and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. Well, for me, the most important thing always is to have a deadline. Uh, so uh, when I, for instance, uh, had a competition and let's say the competition was in the middle of September and it was now beginning of summer, so there was no more time to screw around. So there was the time now to get uh, going on a diet, to get going with the training, to not slack off at all because there was a deadline there. The day of the competition, I had to be in the best shape possible. And I knew that uh, if I come to the competition and I lose because I did not schedule my training the proper way, or I didn't have the right frame of mind, or I didn't give everything, literally worked my butt off, I would be just so angry. So I never wanted to be in that situation. So this is why it was very important to pick that time and to say, this is when I have to be in top shape, and then I work towards that. But it's not just with the competition. I mean, it's the same in the movie business. I mean, to me, it was always a big advantage when I said, okay, my movie starts on April 1, and I have now three months, so I have to get really in great shape. So you pick those times. It could also be that you have no movie and you have no Mr. Olympia or no Mr. America, no Mr. Universe coming up or any of those things. But you say to yourself, the summer starts in June. I'm going to go to the beach in June. And at that time, I want to be in great shape. So that creates an urgency that makes you really start training hard and taking it seriously. Because if you don't have a specific plan, then you wander around. I mean, you can have, as I've told you many times, the best ship or the best plane in the world. But if you don't have a specific goal where you want to go and when you want to get there, you just drift around and you never get anywhere. So this is why it is so important to create that urgency and have a specific time when you want to be in shape. Well, I mean, look, everyone has a problem with time. But the day has 24 hours, and we sleep six. Now, I know there are some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say, just sleep a little faster. Because the bottom line is, we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies, and also to learn something new or to do something new which could easily be that you want to learn a new language or that you want to read as a, a you know, newest resolution I have to read a book every week. Uh, or you say, I'm going to go and reshape my body. So you're going to go and take this hour out of your schedule and say, I'm going to train an hour every day. So this is for most people a, hu a huge challenge, but it is totally doable, I can tell them, because the kind of things that I did when I came to this country, I mean, I went to school, I was working in construction, I was working out my five hours a day. I was taking acting classes from eight o'clock at night to 12 midnight. I was doing all of those things. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. And so there I just want to tell people, don't give me this thing, I have a difficult time with the time and I don't have time for this and I don't have that. You have time, you make the time.